Alrighty guys, we're back for some Great Desert Boros, and this is a Brothers War Standard Brew. We're gonna go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to ya. Also, we do got that Discord link down in the description if you're interested in joining that up. Speaking of joining, we have our very first ever channel member. So, Kavath Lackless, thank you so much for becoming a member. That is very awesome that you are the first one. I really do appreciate that support. Hopefully, I pronounced your name correctly, by the way. <laughs> okay, guys, let's go over the deck. We have Great Desert Prospector. This was a suggestion to build with this card over in the Discord. So, thank you for that suggestion, guys. Five mana, three, two. When it enters the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token for each other creature you control. They have to have a nice wide board state to create a bunch of power stone tokens with this and then you have to have cards in the deck that actually use the power stone tokens or something along those lines right so just a couple of these it is five mana but on the very top end we do have three skitter beam battalions which we've played a lot with on the channel but i should probably go over it real quick because we don't see it too often nine mana four four trample haste and when it enters the battlefield if you cast it Create two tokens that are copies of it, and of course it has that prototype for three and double red, and it will be a 2-2 two -two instead of a 4-4, four -four. so pretty powerful card, guys. It's been an MVP and a lot of our builds with it, so what else do we got in here? We got four Yotian Frontliners, powerful artifact creature. We have a single Mishra's Research Desk, which maybe could be Experimental Synthesizer instead, but I want to try the, the uh, desk out in this one. So we have four Commando Faces Kakazans, of course, because we have three bards in here too, our Givian Recruiter. So two mana, two, two at the beginning of your end step. If you control a creature with power greater than its base power, create a one, one white soldier creature token, a great way to go wide and just turn one Commando into turn two Recruiter is pretty powerful, guys. And we have a couple other really powerful, um, <laughs> two drops here that don't work so much with a turn one commando but that's fine so we have four yotia declares war and four michiko's reign of truth so reign of truth with uh yotia declares war is actually pretty insane guys because on the first chapter of declares war you get the ornithopter and then on the first and second chapter, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each artifact and or enchantment you control. And so Yotia Declares War is an enchantment saga, and then the Ornithopter is an artifact. So playing the Reign of Truth and buffing your flying Ornithopter with it is actually pretty darn powerful, isn't it? And then if you're in the middle of the game too, you're going to have other enchantment and artifacts on the board as well. Yotia Declares War also acts as removal. Surprisingly, that second chapter removes a lot more than you would expect, uh, especially in a deck that knows how to get artifacts on the board, which hopefully we kind of sort of do, right? And then also the bottom chapter on this saga can create um, a 4-4 four -four out of one of our Power Stone tokens for a turn, which sounds pretty cool. Worst comes to worst, you just make that Ornithopter a 4-4 four -four as well. And if you have both of these popping off, maybe you have that 4-4 four -four Ornithopter and then buffing it with the Reign of Truth, huh? That sounds pretty cool. Honestly, just this two-card combo can win games as well. I'm surprised we've never seen this before. I've never seen this before. You guys will have to let me know if you've seen it. Okay, enough rambling about that, huh? Let's go on to the three drops. We have three Restoration of a Ganjo, just great cards to hit with it. It's another enchantment that works with Reign of Truth, and bringing a Reign of Truth back with it is pretty powerful too. And then it also, when it flips into Architect, uh, can help you go wide with the Spirit Creature Tokens, which is just awesome, huh? We have four in the trenches acting as more removal. That bottom ability for five and a white Exile target non-land permanent you don't control until in the trenches leaves the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery and only once. So you can use those power stone tokens from your prospector to actually use this ability, which is pretty awesome, huh? Also, getting six mana isn't as bad as you would think. So, of course, we got a couple devilish valets in here. I had to try it, man. It would, like the deck knows how to go nice and wide. Uh, Restoration of a Ganjo knows how to get uh, cards on the board. In the trenches can buff the valet before it starts doubling 
itself as well. And then we also have Squee attacking in, uh, getting some extra goblins, buffing the valet too. Valet mixed with the Skitterbeam Battalion is pretty powerful in and of itself as well. So yeah, things like the Recruiter doesn't give you the Soldier until the end of turn, so that doesn't necessarily work with Valet. But there's other cards too, like just bringing back the Frontliner too from the Grave and then swinging in, buffing the valet with the frontliner and then getting that goblin from the squee like there's a lot of reasons to have a couple of these uh, but also the trample is really going to work well with that top ability on reign of truth as well so yeah nice okay kind of mentioned the squee here yep we got that squee and that bottom ability uh where you cast squee from the graveyard comes in handy often unfortunately we don't see squee too much anymore because there are so many cards that just kind of gobble up graveyards I'm looking at Graveyard Trespasser, right? That That is everywhere, unfortunately. So yeah, just the one squee. One more card to go over, Mishra's Onslaught. This is a four mana instant, and you can create two one one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. Okay, that's pretty cool. Or you can have creatures you control get plus two plus oh until end of turn. And a deck like this that knows how to go wide, well, hopefully knows how to go wide, right? Both of these abilities are pretty awesome, and the fact that those are artifact soldiers too it works with Yotia, and the artifacts work with the Reign of Truth as well, so cool. Yeah, that's the deck, guys. It's a pretty simple one, but there's a lot of synergies and a lot of combos that are probably just better to showcase in the matches, huh? Crucible, Crucible of Defiance is going to come in handy in a deck like this, especially with the Valet. Uh, tempted to play two of these, honestly, and a single seat over here, as well as the new Battlefield Forge, huh? A bunch of honorable mentions, guys, but we're not going to go over them. That They're going to remain at just mentions, right? Reinforcements could have been cool. Companion was considered. Dragon Spark Reactor was really considered. Adeline, of course. Wedding Announcement, yep. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Hollowed Haunting, there is enough enchantments in here, but not this time, huh? Mural, I'm going to have to make another Devilish Valet deck where Mural is the centerpiece and then we just pack a bunch of other soldiers in here. That sounds awesome. And then we'd run like four Valets instead. Uh, another time, right? And then Rabble Rousing would be pretty cool too. So, Okay, guys, let's go ahead, take this into some ranked and see how we do. All right, we'll see if we can get right into that first match, guys. Woo! Yeah, I've been recording at a little bit of a different time every day, so it has been taking a little bit longer, but there might be other reasons as to why it's taking a little bit longer as well. I'm very happy that we got our first channel member, guys. That is very awesome. If anyone else is uh, ever interested in becoming a member, there's a join button uh, somewhere below the video. You'll get like a little badge next to your name in the comments and uh, a couple emojis as well. So I don't mind the hand. We're going to try it. Here's why. We get the other planes from the restoration. We have a ton of stuff to draw into as well. So <laughs> we'll try it, right? It seems a little slow, but yeah, I hope to add more emojis too. Nice. Great draw. Like I said, ton of stuff to draw into, right? That is awesome. Ooh, three open. Bank buster. Look at us. We got a planes. What would I prefer? Um, I guess in the trenches, because we have two of them. Oh, nice. It, it lands. Yeah, we had to think which one would we rather... I guess we'll attempt to swing, right? I don't exactly, I guess, lightning strike. Wow. Wow. Nothing? Oh, stern lesson. Okay, sure. Draw two cards, then... Okay, yeah, they get a power stone token, and now I'm scared. They have five mana if they want to play like an artifact. Squeeze cool. Squee is excellent, actually. I can only imagine there's going to be like a counter spell in a deck like this, right? Please don't get haste. 
I'm gonna try Squee. I feel like we're kind of on a clock here. Man, that is a powerful swing, guys. Man, the opponent really needs something here. Stern lesson? Okay. Okay. I... This is the type of deck that runs board wipes. I'm feeling... I'm, I'm feeling a Brotherhood's End, or um, this could be a deck that runs... Yeah, they got their fifth mana, so... E no! <laughs> okay, Brotherhood's End. Um, Sundown Pass isn't bad. Be oh, yeah. Yeah, that's our fifth mana, guys. Wow, we, we drew pretty well this game, didn't we? Well, let's see if this gets countered. Make Disappear... This could, uh, this could make or break us right now. I gotta try it, though. I got to, guys. Like, we don't want them to ramp into anything insane. There's no way. There's something, right? Just removal for one of these, at least. Yeah, it's gonna be in a braid. Okay. Oh, but they had to take the one damage. Oh, no. Good game. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Oh, buddy, we drew pretty well there. We drew, like, really well. Yeah, it's just seeing the fifth mana. That was perfect. At the end, the trenches was awesome. It landed. Like, that That could have been a make disappear easily, and then these Skitter Beam Battalion tokens wouldn't be on the board at all. Oh, man. Yeah, eventually Squee might have been able to come back, but like Restoration could have eventually brought uh, Bard back too, but they were getting a ton of mana and these Power Stone tokens were definitely leading into something. Probably Skitter Beam Battalion. You know what? You know what? I wonder if we saw that deck because we have Skitter Beam Battalion in our deck, huh? It's possible, but I thought that type of matchmaking only existed in normal play mode, are they? I asked this before, and I'm still not 100% certain, and I, I don't think I got any answers either. Do they do that type of matchmaking in ranked nowadays, too? I don't think they do. I think that was just a coincidence. This is a much better hand than the first hand, so... Yeah, much better hand. I, I kind of wish this was a uh, Kumano. But that's fine. Okay. We're going to get the pass down so we have the two. Also, did they say hello? Hi. On it. Yep, we got the turn two and the turn three. Yeah, I wanted to make sure we had the guarantee to turn two. Bank Buster. Okay, they're not... Um, they weren't concerned about getting that extra damage through, because we probably would have let the Sleeper through. I'm going to try to get that damage through, though. They can't corrupt the Bank Buster yet or anything. Okay, restoration. And grab our planes. We got a ton of mana in hand, guys. Scare Beam could come down whenever. Trespasser. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Battlefield Forge. Yee. Alright, well, we'll bring a planes back. A little bit of ramp here, I guess. Maybe we'll get to nine mana. Drop a full-blown battalion, huh? Yep, they can always power up that bank buster. We'll use the forge to play the research desk. We could use this, too. It is until the end of our next turn. I really don't want them to, uh... Really don't want them to exile it right now, but I mean, eventually it's going to get exiled. And seeing if we find like a one drop could be fine. A, a fine reason to use it on our turn. Okay. No, I'm not going to. 
Well, we could find like a one drop with it. It's fine. We could always just play the one drop next turn. Oh no, Liliana gets rid of the uh, recruiter here. And now they're going to gobble up recruiter from the grave. But the battalion does hit the Liliana quite nicely, honestly. Okay, five damage. Oh, six damage if they wanted to, but they do want to hit the recruiter because we have the restoration in here, yeah. So, like, next turn we could play another restoration. So they want to make sure we have a nice clean graveyard over here. All right, let's see what we find. Oh, a two drop. That's right. It doesn't cost two mana. Ooh, another restoration. I mean, it helps thin out the deck. Like, we don't need the Sundown Pass. I do want to play the uh, Battalion next turn, though. To make sure we can clean up that Liliana. Tough decision. I'm going to go pass. Because I don't plan on playing the Restoration even if we had that option. So we might as well get that land. Restoration blocks the Trespasser so well. Oh, Kamano just takes care of that Liliana too. Nice. That was a good draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm. <laughs> it's tempting. It's tempting. I'm not going to, though. We're going to get this down. And actually, I'm just, I'm swinging with it. We might be able to outpace them. We might, right? Um, getting that down also means an Invoke Despair. We have more to sacrifice. No Invoke Despair this time. That's good news. Uh, Field of Ruin over there. They just hold back. Oh, another land. That's not good. Okay. Well. Let's see what we see, huh? Let's go Research Desk. Yeah, th this is a lot of mana. <laughs> this is way too much mana. Well, let's see what we find here. Ooh, Mishra's Onslaught. We'll have the four. I like that. It is instant speed as well. Good full swing. I mean, they know we have it, but I mean, we might as well full swing first. And I'm going to. See what they end up doing. Because all these have trample, so. And this has vigilance. And. Okay. Saving the trespasser, gonna block with the bank buster, probably into the restoration, I would assume. But they also have to, they do have to worry about the trample. Got to be careful not to click past the blocking step. <laughs> we want to make sure we use the onslaught. Okay, we have enough to kill the bank buster. Creatures you control get plus two, plus oh until end of turn. So four is getting through here, two is getting through here. Uh, one's getting through here. And restoration dies. Good swing, guys. It's a good swing. I'm a little bit afraid of seeing more mana next turn, though. <laughs> and the Trespasser can gain them life, too. Ooh, they save it all back. City of the Empire is pretty good. We save, uh, we save a land to sacrifice, or to discard to, for the ward cost here. Yeah, we might as well. We might as well, yeah. Makes sense to me. Full swing. They block probably Kamano. Field of Ruin, hit a pass. Okie dokies. I'll grab a mountain. I don't think it really matters. Oh, is the valet on top? Oh, that makes me a little bit sad. Yeah, it's going to be a block for the commando, and we're going to take this out. 
Let's do the empire. I am definitely sure. And we'll get rid of the mountain here. Very nice. Down to two. Opponent's got to be sweating. I'm going to save this planes in hand in case we have to, uh, I don't know, do something similar. They drop a GG's. Hey, good game, opponent. Oh, man. Hey, we're one victory away from platinum, guys. Finally, it took all month. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is funny. Ah, I, I knew we'd eventually accidentally get there, right? But it, it's been taking a little bit of extra time because of how brutal the meta's been. Ah, uh, jeez. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see. Maybe we can get it in this video. That would be awesome. Okay. Look, we got the prospector in hand. Yeah, I like this. Might as well go Battlefield Forge, get the Frontliner down. Fault Conscript, okay. Potentially more Mono Black. I do not mind the Bard here at all. Do this before combat. That way we buff the Bard with the Frontliner and then get that 1-1. One, one. I'd like to see some mana. Uh, even in the trenches would be really, really good right now. So, any land off the top. Oh yeah, get that recruiter out of here immediately. And honestly, it's probably for the best to do that on their turn, because uh, they don't know if we're rocking protection. Because they probably don't see, like, a Boros Soldier lineup too often. So, Declares War is a fine play. Let's see where they end up blocking here. And I am considering the research desk to search for the land this turn. That way next turn we can at least play the uh, restoration. Okay, they go the frontliner and take the two. I don't really mind that. I'll go Yotia Declares War. I was tempted by the desk to find the land, but I think we're going to find the land. And we're going to do the full saga here. No point in reading ahead this time round. Ooh, Reckoner Raid. Cool. Looks like they're missing their third mana too. Uh, Frontliner's fine. Nope, submit zero, nothing to hit. They did not play anything. I believe we're forced to target. Okay. So we can bring back this frontliner, play the other one. Just for a, a bigger swing, I suppose. Yeah, might as well. I Again, I'm still tempted by the research desk, but I think we'll find the mana. We can also get the desk down this turn instead of the other frontliner. But I think frontliner is probably the play anyways. That way we can continue to get some decent swings in. Man, the in the trenches would be so good. Next turn, our artifact. One of our artifacts. Hopefully survives and becomes a 4-4 four because four, now we only have the Ornithopter. That was two cut downs. Let's see, does the Ornithopter survive and become a 4-4 four, four here? It does. Okay, hey. Another recruiter is pretty good. Okay. Let's swing for five. Oh, nope. Ah, Infernal Grasp. Okay. Hmm. Well, that means we won't get the 1-1 one, one from the Recruiter. Would we have gotten it, right, if it becomes the 4-4 four, four with base power? Power greater than its base power. I guess it 
wouldn't work that way since the base power is a 4-4, right? Ah, oh, man, I would have loved to test it there. All right, guys, let's get the other recruiter down. We're eventually going to find that third mana. Like, as tempted as I am by the desk, it's been uh, many turns. I lost count of the turns, but it's been many turns. Oh, no. More removal? It feels like more removal. It feels like it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now I'm tempted by the restoration to make sure we find more, but honestly, in the trenches is probably just better. Right now. Start going wide with the recruiter, if they let us. It might be more removal. It is another Infernal Grasp, guys. I mean... I don't know if they trade here, but it would be a pretty good trade for us. It's not a bad trade. <laughs> it really isn't. Um, well, I guess we're, we're back to nothing here. Oh, Shieldred's gross. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get Restoration down. We're going to make sure we get that fifth mana for the uh, Desert Prospector. And... Oh, we need to find creatures, guys. We need to make sure we get some Power Stones, so that way we can activate in the trenches more effectively to gobble up that Shieldred. Okay, Trespasser comes down. Oh no, guys. We're in some serious trouble. Down to eight. We can bring back. Okay, Sundown Pass. Okay. So, let's bring back. Oh man, Yotia Declares War could be cool too. No, it's, it's got to be... It enters tapped as well. So if we do go Declares War, we'll have a 0-2 as a blocker, but Bard would not be able to block. But our 1-1 one, one Soldier from the Bard would be able to block, because we have In the Trenches on the board. And we'll get two Power Stone tokens to make sure we can activate the In the Trenches next turn, or we can go Research Desk and see if we can find something else here. Okay, I'll go research desk. It is two cards, so we could find something. Oh, buddy, the battalion. We don't have the mana for the battalion, guys. <laughs> oh, no. Till the end of our next turn. Um... Okay, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be Kumano, and maybe we do the research desk one more time. I'm sorry, opponent, this is taking me a second. We'll still have the one for the Kumano. See what else we can find here. Another restoration could be good. All right, get that Kumano down. We get our one one to block the Shieldred. Oh, but then Trespasser ends it because we're going to take the two from the Shieldred next turn. Oh, no. All right, well, let's see. And also just, like, simple removal would end this game, too. Oh, no, guys. We did get to play Prospector. Yeah, the so the one from the Trespasser and then the two from the Shieldred. Yeah, GG opponent. Oh, wow. Had some removal uh, for the bard anyways. That, that could have gone a lot of different ways, huh? Now, the opponent was missing their third mana for a while there, too. Uh, to be fair. We don't have any instant speed spot removal here. And this is uh, activate only as a sorcery and only once, too. So if we did have, like, the six mana or something. Okay, two victories away from platinum now. But that's fine. We're eventually going to get there. <laughs> Again, maybe we'll get there in this video, huh? The deck 
doesn't feel bad at all. This actually feels pretty solid. Too bad we couldn't get the Prospector down. I should have just played it just for fun. Now wait, if we would have played Prospector, we would have had an extra blocker there too. Hold on a minute, that could have been my fault. Really depends. No. Yeah, because if their only removal was the Liliana, they could have killed the Recruiter. Or that's what we would have sacrificed. We would have had two blockers. Oh no, we might still be... We Yeah. That might have been my fault, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go back and watch that one again. Alright, a couple turns of Frontliner is 100% fine. It's just kind of how our mana lined up here. Okay. Get the other Frontliner down. And squeeze a good draw. Ballet's a good draw. Yeah, everything. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I'm assuming the three drop we play is going to be removed. I'd rather the squee get removed right now. How do you guys feel about that? Yeah, I, I'd rather the squee get removed. Is this three mono black decks in a row? That's not... That's not pretty. Come on, opponent. Play uh, play some blue. Be be a Demir deck. I wouldn't mind that. I, I mean, I would mind, but like... Oh, it might be zombies, though. That could be fun. Adversary's a tough zombie to get around. In the trenches is an amazing draw. Sounds good to me. Let's go in the trenches because I don't really want to lose the valet to death touch. I'd rather lose a frontliner because we can bring that back. Now if we draw an untapped mana source, we can go valet and then bring a frontliner back from the grave. Which could be pretty powerful. Bellstinger. Okay, this might be zombies. More death touch. More death touch means that valet dies, but is it worth this powerful swing? I think it is. I, I'd love to see something fancy with the valet. But it's a good chunk of damage. Like, it's just like, it's decent. Six over here. Oh, where am I? I'm sorry, guys. We'll just go uh, into the front liners because it doesn't matter since the trample goes through regardless. Yeah, down to four. Like, I, yeah, I think that was worth it. We'll see, though. Gix, nice. Okay, planes. Um, I think we go all the way through the uh, Yotia Declares War. If we go right to the third and swing, we force a block with the Gix. But I'd rather get the flyer in the air. How do you guys feel about that? I'd rather get the flyer, yeah. I think so. And then by doing this... I'm gonna save the planes in hand for now. There's no good reason to do that, though. Especially if they, like... Yeah, I better play it. The, the thought process there was... If this is going to lean into, like, a normal mono black and they end up rocking, like, a Trespasser, then having that to be able to target the Trespasser. But there's no good reason. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. Shieldred can easily start to pull this back for the opponent. That's not good. Okay. Submit zero. Uh, target you. Yep. So, seeing the 6th mana for the In the Trenches is, is going to be a, a huge moment for us. Oh, we have 3 in the air. 
Well, we have three in the air. GG opponent. Wow. Yeah, the in the trenches number two ended up working out really nicely. Every point of damage there really, really mattered. Woo! That, that shieldred. When I saw, like, the extra zombies and everything, I was like, oh, okay, like, maybe, maybe we're safe. Maybe some of, like, uh, Mono Black's biggest threats aren't here. But, of course, you gotta plug at least one shieldred in there. It's just too powerful. It can run away with games, like, uh, easily, right? So, so like, yeah, just having one on the top end of a zombie build, I mean... You could probably talk me into two or three, even, even though it's not a zombie, you know? Uh-oh. This might be a mulligan. Oh, we have so much mana, though. Eh, we'll be fine. You you know what? Like, there's so much we could draw into here. Even if in the next couple turns we just see, like, our fifth mana... I wouldn't be complaining too much, you know what I mean? Like, that wouldn't be that bad. At least we have a turn one, too. That matters. See, restoration, that's already pretty good. No turn two? Who needs it? Mm hmm. Okay, so. Make disappear. The Reign of Truth, I mean. They make disappear the Reign of Truth, we bring it back with restoration. I think that is probably better than just losing restoration. Oh no, they just let it go. Okay, it might not be a make disappear then. Um, it's a good swing though. They got their fateful absence. Okay, yeah, just some normal spot removal. That'll work. Okay, yeah, uh, Reign of Truth doesn't have a target for next turn now. Gonna keep it open. Okay, some... Probably Esper Control then. If it's es Esper Legends usually plays a creature early on. Well, if it is a Syncopate... They could Syncopate for two anyways, because they have three open. Yeah, we might as well just go Restoration and get the planes, play the planes, right? And keep the seat just in case we draw more land next turn. Um, I don't like bringing back the Frontliner for no good reason, so it's going to hold off for now. And we have, uh, okay, Spara's Headquarters, wow. We have the other Reign of Truth if we wanted to discard that, too. Restoration of a Gancho, sure, sure. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and get that exiled first, I guess. That's fine. Okay, so. You can always bring back the Frontliner with this, too. It comes back tapped, though. Reign of Truth would be fine if we actually were attacking in, so I'd rather play it. Rather play it. Alright. A free Reign of Truth is fine. I guess. We could also decline. We could. You know what? I'm gonna decline. I think that is completely fine. I'm sorry, opponent. I'm trying to think of how to... How to best get around a Wandering Emperor now is what I'm thinking about. Let's try Restoration. Number two. It does land, so it must not be a Make Disappear. Although we could have played around it there if we wanted to. I don't think playing the second one just yet is worth it. We might as well just draw with the clue. This will lose. We could always keep the clue, too. We wanted more damage, potentially. Memory Deluge. Okay. 
Right. Sorry for taking so long, opponent. Um, apparently, this deck uh, makes me think for some reason. <laughs> I wasn't. I was expecting a relatively easy uh, experience. Down to a three-three with this, unfortunately, but that's fine. Ooh, devilish valet. Ooh, Yotia declares war. Okay. Well, that's a good one to bring back. We'll go ahead and get that zero too. Yeah, this looks like just some control. That's what it looks like. Probably just more spot removal for the portrait too, I would assume. And pretty much anything we play here is probably gonna eat a counter. Getting Valet down would be awesome. We have two mana open, and I'd rather the Valet get countered than the Battalion. So let's see. If Valet hits, then we expect Wandering Emperor, right? Because then they're like, oh, that's a perfect target for Wandering Emperor, right? If it doesn't hit, okay. I, I mean, it, it still could be a Wandering Emperor because they'd want to hit the portrait too, but it really depends. All right, I'm gonna keep the Reign of Truth in hand for now. Let's bring back the Frontliner and just kind of go for it. Union of the Third Path. Okay, it's a Union of the Third Path deck, guys. That's terrifying. Here's why. Oh no, it's terrifying. The Farewell. The Farewell. <laughs> Oh, the farewell. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm, I'm just, I'm going for it, guys. The, the, this deck runs like, I don't even know, four farewells is what it feels like, honestly. So, um, if they're going to target something, we want to kind of spread out this damage overall. Okay, yeah, yeah, oh no. Oh no, guys, farewell next turn sounds terrifying. Look at that damage, though, huh? Soul Partition. Ooh, they saved themselves from eight damage, so maybe it's not a farewell. I mean, they probably would have wanted to save... <gasps> no farewell. There's no farewell, guys. Oh my goodness. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, I was, I was, I thought there was a guaranteed farewell. Um, oh, I could have done that in a different order. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm over here panicking. Um, well, now we have to, like, anticipate. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, Prospector, I'd love to land that, but, I mean, we have to try the battalion, right? One, two. If we go Prospector, we actually... Farewell hits artifacts too, right? Yeah, what the heck. Let's go for it. I'm pretty sure Valet won't survive this turn, but it's still pretty cool. And it's a good chunk of damage uh, still too. Really? No way, opponent! <sighs> Let's go, guys! <laughs> oh man, ah, jeez, I am like, I don't, e I can't even, I, I have no words, <laughs> dude. I was certain, I like, there was these control decks, guys. These control decks are so brutal, man. Um, but they must not have had simple removal. For the Devilish Valet, so we got lucky. We really, really did. Um, yeah, Valet was about to double itself uh, three times because of Battalion. I would have loved to see Prospector hit the board, get some Power Stone tokens, and then eventually use those Power Stones um, to play a full-blown Battalion too. But hey, Prospector hitting this board would have buffed the portrait too because it's every artifact, so every single Power Stone, which is pretty cool, huh? Lots of stuff packed into this build, guys. Let's go over it one more time. 
Woo, buddy. Ah, uh, hey, I keep forgetting, forgetting to bring it up, but yeah, ever since uh, the new year, 2023, we set a new sub goal for... Uh, 2023 and it set all the way up at 5,000 but we got a whole year to reach it and I believe in you guys so if you want to help us reach that goal then consider subscribing because it is much appreciated. Here's the deck list again guys this was a really fun one huh holy cow man it did a lot you want it to be more competitive then you probably want to think about dropping down to one prospector you don't want to drop all the prospectors because that takes up away the soul of the build i mean i guess you could if you wanted it to be more competitive because yeah you saw how it kind of chilled in our hand a lot of the times there unfortunately right battalion was awesome valet was sweet squee was cool in the trenches was really good and unfortunately um getting that six mana was a little tougher than i thought and you'd think it wouldn't be too bad by the time the opponent gets the shielded onto the board uh which is usually just right on time uh turn four uh pretty much every game against like those types of builds mono black or grixis or anything that runs the shielded so expect Shieldred to be right on time, and then unfortunately then in the trenches um, is, a, is a couple turns behind from that six mana to be able to remove it. Yotia know, declares war wasn't, be, uh, wasn't able to remove too much today either because um, even though this deck does have a lot of artifacts and a lot of ways to get artifacts, it's on the top end of the build, and so... Yotia declares war doesn't remove too much but I wouldn't drop down any of these if any at all maybe down to three because it works so well with that reign of truth which is why you know I was I was rambling about this little card combo at the beginning and I, I think it's awesome I love that we could just buff the ornithopter a couple turns in a row and then maybe win <laughs> like that's kind of insane to think about restoration is really good I think the three of is fine there have been moments where we've run four of these in the past and it just feels like too much and it, it, yeah sometimes like you only need one of these in a game and it does a lot in that game but then you see the second one and you're like well this isn't what I wanted to see at all even though the first one did a lot I don't know it's, it's just something about this card sometimes you just want to see one in a match uh, of course in that Last game, having a couple architects on the board was pretty awesome. Bard is sweet. Commando's awesome. Of course, Frontliner's very powerful. The research desk was fine. I wouldn't change that, I don't think. Onslaught was cool. Definitely worth the one of. Just everything about the deck was cool, guys. Actually, uh, potentially one of my favorite uh, builds since the Brothers War came out, which says a lot. I've been having a freaking blast with all the new cards <laughs> from the Brothers War, so... Yeah, guys, hey, thank you so much for being here. If you made it this far into the video, then y'all are champions, and I super duper appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video.